What's going on guys? My name is Caleb Strackengast. This is Buffalo Creek Outdoors. I'm back up here at Grafton Archery, continuing on with the bow comparisons. Today's video is gonna compare the two brand new flagship bows from Hoyt. We're gonna have the Alpha X30 and the RX8. Let's jump on into it. All right, so both of these bows are gonna be the flagship. One's aluminum, one's carbon. The flagship 30 inch, roughly, uh, bow models from Hoyt for 2024. The biggest difference between the two is going to be, of course, the fact that the RX-8 is carbon and the Alpha X-30 is aluminum. Other than that, these bows are very, very similar, which is why the guys have the question, which bow should I buy? So we're gonna kind of get into that. We're gonna kind of get into some of the benefits to each one of them. We'll go over my score sheet. Once again, I'll have the score sheets uh, linked in this video. You can get a blank score sheet or you can look at the score sheets the way I scored these bows here. So if you wanna take a look at that, get into the link. It'll take you to my Google Drive and you'll be able to download those files. All right, so for shootability, uh, once again, we measured axle to axle length, riser length, brace height, and reflex to get our total scores. So total score for the RX-8, we're gonna have 30 inches, 30 and 9 sixteenths on uh, axle to axle. The Alpha 30, Alpha X-30 is gonna be 30 and 3 eighths. Riser on the RX-8, 27 and a sixteenth. Uh, the riser on the Alpha X, 27 and an eighth. These bows are almost identical. Brace height, six and an eighth on the RX-8 and six and three sixteenths on the Alpha X. Then reflex, still very, very similar. Two and a half inches on the RX-8 and two and a quarter inches on the Alpha X. For a total score of 61 and a quarter on the RX-8 and 61.437 on the Alpha X, both of which are gonna get these bows a six out of my uh, possible 10 points for shootability. I don't think either one of these bows are necessarily gonna be the most shootable bow out there, but I don't think either one of them are gonna cause issues with people as far as tunability and shootability and things like that. They're both gonna be roughly what you would consider uh, that like, or what you would expect out of a 30 inch bow. So shooting these bows in the back, uh, I would say between the two, it's a very close uh, comparison. As far as the numbers, they're almost identical. My preference, just shooting the bow's bare bow at 20 yards was the RX-8. Now, with that being said, I've been shooting a carbon bow for the last several years, so I'm more comfortable with that platform. I'm not taking anything away from the aluminum, uh, I just think once you load these bows down, uh, the RX-8 shootability wise, it gives you more options because it's a little bit lighter if you like a lightweight or a lot more lightweight bow, which I do. It's all gonna be personal preference at that point because the scores are almost identical. So it's gonna be kind of pre personal preference as far as which one you think is gonna be more shootable. Tunability wise, these bows are both gonna score the same number. They're gonna score seven on tunability. Uh, because they have the same options as far as how tunable they are. Can you adjust your cams left and right? Yes, with a press, so you get one point. Now, one thing I will say, Hoyt changed their spacer system this year. There's three aluminum spacers, they're color-coded, which makes it very simple to uh, adjust these things back and forth. Another thing is now they did away with the Eclipse on the edges of the axles, and they went to a threaded axle with a screw in each end. Anyway, they, they both, they did that. That's some pretty good features that Hoy added this year, which I really like. Uh, limb pockets, there's no way to uh, lock your limb pockets down or adjust them uh, other than the limb bolts to adjust your weight. Draw length, this is where Hoyt really stepped it up this year. The new Hoyts, both models are gonna be adjustable in quarter inch increments on the draw length, which is huge for guys like myself that tend to shoot around that 27 and a quarter the best. Uh, so you get a two there. Grip, 
Uh, the grips on these bows are probably my favorite rubber grip that comes on a bow. But with that being said, I generally tend to take them off. Uh, so I'll give them a one on grip. They're not adjustable on the bow. You got to take them off, change them out. But there are good aftermarket options out there for side plates or the ultra view grip. There's a bunch of different options for these bows. Uh, let off, you can adjust the let off, and that's another key feature that these bows have this year. In the past, you've had to get a separate mod for let off. Uh, this year, these bow, these cams, the new HPX Exact cams, are adjustable uh, from 75, 80, and 85 percent on the mod itself, which is huge. It's, it's, it's just it makes this bow a lot more customizable without having to order different parts. So you get a two there. Uh, timing, uh, you still have to put these bows in a press to adjust timing, so you get a one. Strings of cables, you got to put the bow in a press to change the strings of cables, so you get a one. Uh, and then the integrated rest and integrated sights. Both of these bows are for the most part gonna be identical on that. They're gonna both have a machined dovetail on the back. The aluminum is actually machined into the riser. The carbon is molded into the riser. It's an it's aluminum insert that's molded into the riser. Same thing with the integrated sights. One thing I will say, I think the aluminum is going to have a more durable setup when it comes to the bridge lock, or not the bridge lock, I'm sorry, I'm talking about Matthews. The uh, Picteni mount on the front for the sights and the dovetail on for the integrated rest. I think it's going to have a more bomb-proof setup there because what's on the RX-8 is an inserted molded uh, mounting system there. Take it for what it's worth, the aluminum may be a little bit more durable in that aspect. So for tunability, total scores, uh, you're gonna end up with a total number of, or total score of seven points for tunability. Draw cycle, both of these bows I gave an eight. They have an extraordinary draw cycle, extremely smooth. Uh, they're a little bit stiffer at the front I think, uh, but then as you go, it just gets so smooth. It's just stiff, initially stiff, and then phew, I mean, it's straight back. Uh, I love the draw cycles on the mat, on the Hoyts. Uh, I've loved them for a long time. These are extraordinary. These are probably my favorite as far as draw cycle of the Hoyt offerings um, in this shorter platform uh, based on the RX-7s, the RX-5s, RX-3s. All that, these have been my favorite 30 inch bow platform offerings from Hoyt in a long, long time. And it's an extremely smooth cam. Letdown, this is where these things really shine compared to other brands. It is so easy just to let these bows down. I think because of the fact that the cam stacks on the front in the draw cycle, that when you go to let down, there's not that, it's not really wanting to yank your shoulder off. When you go to let down, it's just easy to let down and it really gets the tension when you get about right here. Um, and I really I really appreciate that about these Hoyts. So I gave them both a 10 for let down. Back wall, I also gave these bows a 10. You get into the back wall on either one of these bows, you get back there and it just, I mean, it is there. You can't pull again. I mean, you can pull as hard as you want to against it and there's nothing giving. Uh, I would probably give the edge a little bit to the Matthews. I think they had a slightly better back wall, but between the Hoyts and between all the other brands, these bows are a very, very close second on back wall this year. Noise. These bows are also extremely, extremely quiet. I gave both of these bows a five on noise and vibration. I gave the RX-8 a five and the RX, or the, I'm sorry, the Alpha X 30, a four. In my opinion, this year's carbons are the deadest carbon that they've produced, especially the shorter carbon. This thing is so dead in the hand, it's not even funny. There's a slight vibration to the aluminum, but it's it dissipates extremely fast. With that being said, these bows are built with these little shorty stabilizers designed to be what's deadening these bows. If you take that little shorty stabilizer off, you would be very surprised how much hand shock and vibration both of these bows have and how loud they are. You put that stabilizer back on there and it is just dead quiet, dead in the hand. So keep that in mind when you're selecting options on these bows as far as accessories, keep in mind that these bows are designed to shoot with those on there. So if you change it, it may change vibration, it may change noise. But 
I've enjoyed this setup, the way that the riser kicks out on both of these bows, that little shorty stabilizer being low actually feels like a much longer stabilizer, especially if you want to attach the uh, limb legs on these bows, the ghost stick to the ghost stick twos. If you want to attach those on there, it extends it out even a little bit farther. Uh, and that's just, that's another good option that these Hoyts have. The fact that they have that lower stabilizer hole so low on these bows really, really aids in these things balancing out in a short, compact stabilizer for a hunting setup. Talk about the speeds on these bows. Once again, almost identical. Uh, I got 296 on both uh, at 27 inches with a 350 grain arrow at 70 pounds. I got 274 on both uh, with my 425 grain arrow. I got 251 on both with a 513 grain arrow. At 30 inches, I got 332 on the RX-8 and I got 333 on the um, Alpha X. So negligible difference there. One foot a second could be that shot could be a little different or those that three round of shots could be a little bit different. Uh, 306 with the 425 grain arrow at 30 inches on both. And then 279 on both with the 513 grain arrow. So these bows both ended up with a score of a nine on speed. They are faster bows um, compared to some of the others this year. And they're a good speed for both range of a, a seven, um, a 27 or a shorter draw length all the way up to your longer draw lengths weight these bows do take a little bit of a penalty but they are a lot lighter than last year's bows they still were able to take they took about a quarter pound off each one of these bows i believe uh, the rx8 comes in at four pounds and the alpha x30 comes in at 4.55 pounds so you're gonna be about a half pound, a little over a half pound heavier with the aluminum. Some guys prefer a little bit heavier bow. Also to keep in mind, that is weighed without the little stabilizers on the bow. Um, so it is gonna weigh a little bit more with those, with those stabilizers on there. Not much more, but do keep in mind, if you hang it off a scale, it's not gonna weigh four pounds or 4.55 4, 4 pounds. It's gonna be more like 4.25 pounds and 4. probably 75 pounds with those stabilizers on. Take those off, they measure what Hoyt says they measure, but once again, they measure them bare bow. So just keep that in mind. So that gives the Alpha X, I mean, I'm sorry, that gives the RX-8 a total of a nine for score. On a 30 inch bow, uh, four pounds is pretty good. Uh, and then the Alpha X, I gave a score of a six based on my grading criteria just a hard score number. Take that for what it's worth. If you like a, a aluminum bow, you won't, it's not heavy at all. Uh, it's definitely lighter than the previous iterations of these bows. But if you like a little bit heavier setup, you may enjoy the Alpha X over the RX-8. It's gonna be very, very up to you on that aspect. I just wanna give you the numbers so you have them. So for balance, uh, both of these bows, I gave a four on balance. They weren't, they didn't balance as well as some of the other bows that I shot this year, but they balanced extremely well. And that's going to be very, very tune or you're, it's highly adjustable based on the accessories that you're going to shoot. But I gave both of these bows a four just based on how they came out of the box, holding them in my hand. For integrated accessories, both of these bows are going to get a four out of five. Uh, they both have an option for an integrated sight. They both have the option for integrated wrist. They do not have an option for an integrated stabilizer. Some guys like that, some guys don't. They don't have that option, so it's on here. Spec quivers, uh, the quivers that are made for these bows are exceptional, uh, and they do offer a specific quiver uh, for Hoyt-specific uh, Hoyt bows. Uh, and then the bow stands, do they have a bow stand that's mountable where you can shoot with that stand on the bow? Yes, they do. They have the new Ghost Stick 2.0s. Uh, and it's a phenomenal little setup. Uh, didn't pull them out of the box and mount them to these bows because the way Hoyt has these in the box, uh, it would tear up the, 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 the box. So I just pulled some little quick, uh, I don't remember, quick stands or whatever they're, they're called. They're cheaper. They work exceptionally well as also, but as far as shooting with your bow stand on the bow, those ghost sticks are the, for sure the way to go. They operate almost like a 
uh, rifle bipod. Um, you can adjust them whichever direction that you want. And I think as far as somebody that's gonna hunt in the mountains, maybe get on some uneven ground, that's probably gonna be your best option for a bow stand if you wanna leave it on your bow. So total for uh, integrated accessories is gonna be a four. The RX-8 comes in at a steep, steep price, around $1,800. And the Alpha X is gonna come in at a lot more manageable, but still a steep price at $1,250. So we're gonna get a two on price on the uh, RX-8, and you're gonna get a five on price on the Alpha X. That's gonna give these bows a total score of 79 for the RX-8 and 78 for the Alpha X. That number, those numbers are so close that, that there's a lot there that's gonna come down to personal preference. Just keep that in mind. When I'm telling you these scores, some of this criteria is hard facts and other criteria is personal preference and it, it will be opinionated. It's hard to get away from the opinion that you have because you've gained and learned and you've decided that you like certain things. It's hard to take that completely out of it, but I do try to take uh, and give an unbiased review and an unbiased, an unbiased point of view on these bows, which is so nice about the way that the guys up here at Grafton do. For me, they allow me to shoot all these bows, test them out, and whichever bow I like the best, I can shoot for that year. So it leaves me at a, at a, in a position where I'm not having to be loyal to a brand and I'm not having to speak more highly on one brand than the other. So you can take it for what it's worth. It's still gonna have some opinion in it, but it's not opinion based on a bias to a brand. So like I say, guys, these bows are extremely close. Which bow would I recommend to you? If it's not worth the extra $600 for carbon, the aluminum is the way to go. If you have the extra cash and you're willing to spend it, I do think the RX-8 is a better option. The reason I say that is the carbon doesn't get as cold to the touch as the aluminum does. And I know some guys are like, we'll just wear gloves. Other guys don't like to wear gloves. But 100% that carbon does not get as cold on your hand as the aluminums do. Also with the carbon, it's deader in the hand. I mean, it's quieter as far as if you knock your bow up against something, it's a lot quieter noise than a bare aluminum bow is. That's another benefit to the carbon. Uh, it's more rigid than aluminum, so kind of speaks to why it's a little bit less vibration in the hand. Uh, I prefer personally the carbon over the aluminum. If it was me, if I'm gonna shoot one of these bows this year, it probably will be the carbon uh, over the Alpha X. With that being said, this platform, this Alpha X platform is my favorite aluminum offering uh, that Hoyt has came out with so far. The big thing with the aluminum is it's gonna save you some money. As far as the shootability, the tunability, the way these bows handle and things like that, there's not gonna be much difference, guys. So just keep that in mind. You definitely need to shoot these bows. Shoot both of them before you make up your mind. But if you already know you're not going to want to shoot an $1,800 plus dollar bow, then the Alpha X is definitely the way to go. You're not missing out on very much to get the Alpha X over the RX-8 unless you want the benefits of that carbon. So take that for what it's worth, guys. I appreciate you watching the video. Don't hesitate to comment down below and ask any questions you want to. Uh, please comment down below if there's any other bow reviews that you want to see. I'm probably going to start toning down on the bow reviews and the bow comparisons and start getting into turkey season here. And then I'll jump back into the bow comparisons over the summer. So if there's anything you guys want to see, comment down below and let me know. If you have any questions, guys, call these guys up here at Grafton Archery at 704-855-1300. They'll be more than happy to help you in any way that they can. So like I always say, guys, I appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe if you like the content. Remember to live your life to the fullest and use your passions to bless others. We'll catch you on the next video.